Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, this is episode 50 of Carl's Spirits. Guys, episode 50. Wow, what a milestone for me. Uh, never thought we would do 50 of these episodes. What started out as uh, something to do during uh, quarantine uh, has really, uh, well, just kind of expanded. And I've really enjoyed doing this. I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, more importantly, I hope you learned a little bit about one of our favorite drinks, bourbon. And so uh, that's kind of been my goal this whole time. It was a little education, a little bit of fun, a little bit about my thoughts about uh, each pour. But uh, episode 50, ladies and gentlemen. And I thought for episode 50, we would uh, do one of my personal favorites. Uh, it was kind of my unicorn bottle for quite a while. And that is Rock Hill Farms Single Barrel Bourbon. Rock Hill Farms Single Barrel Bourbon. Uh, I don't know why it was my unicorn. Uh, it just kind of started that this was a bottle that I really wanted to taste. I'd heard some great things about it. I'd heard some not so great things about it. But uh, like many of you, I want to make up my own mind about something. Uh, so I really started looking for this bottle. I got a bottle and it is, uh, in my opinion, very good. So let's uh, do a little bit of our usual here. Uh, the history, really simple tonight. Uh, this is uh, a product of Buffalo Trace. Uh, it comes out of uh, Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, of course, Buffalo Trace is owned by Sazerac. This particular uh, spirit, Rock Hill Farms, is from Mashville 2 for Buffalo Trace. And Mashville tr uh, 2 features uh, all of Trace's single barrel offerings. So your Blanton's, your Elmer T. Lee, your Hancock Reserve, and now Rock Hill Farms, these are all single barrel bourbons. Mashville 2 is also their high rye recipe. And so a little bit more rye in it than your standard, let's say, Buffalo Trace or um, E.H. Taylor, uh, those types of things. What really sets this bottle apart from Blanton's and Elmer and Hancock is its proof. Uh, Rock Hill Farms is proofed at 100 proof. In fact, it's the highest of all of Mashville 2's offerings. So Blanton's comes in at, I think, 90 uh, Elmer is right there as well. Hancock is, is uh, also. But this comes in at 100 proof, so a little higher proof with the same mash bill. We also have to keep in mind that it probably came from a different warehouse on the Frankfort, Kentucky campus of Buffalo Trace. So we're getting the same recipe as Elmer and Blanton's and Hancock. We are getting the exact same juice. It's just how long is it aged? And it's aged about the same, but where is it aged and it's proof? And so to me, that's kind of cool because it talks about the crafting of bourbon and how different flavors come from just one or two variables. Uh, the other thing about this uh, particular expression that I find interesting is it actually gets very little press and very, very few marketing dollars. In fact, it's not even on their website sometimes. Uh, Blanton's eats up most of the marketing dollars that are coming out of Buffalo Trace for their mash bill, too. Elmer T. Lee, uh, highly sought after. Uh, it's been almost impossible to find the past three or four years. And uh, rumor is much of it is actually going overseas. But uh, interestingly, uh, Rock Hill Farms came out very shortly after Blanton's. And it kept up the, the horse theme. You know, the little horse on top of the Blanton's bottle, Well, Rock Hill Farms, produces this beautiful decanter. And it's got the, it looks like hand-painted, it's not, it's etched, uh, scene of a horse uh, in the background and fences and little trees. It's very, very neat. Uh, it has the horse theme continuing. Uh, the name Rock Hill Farms comes after a particularly fertile piece of bottomland along the Kentucky River, right outside of Frankfurt that has uh, basically been farming gold for landowners since the 1700s. So that's uh, the history in a nutshell on Rock Hill Farms. Now, mash bill for this. Uh, Buffalo Trace does not usually announce its mash bills. We know they have two, 
Mash Bill 1 and Mash Bill 2. I've told you already that this is Mash Bill 2, and it's supposed to be their high rye recipe. And what Trace means by high rye, it's rumored to be about 15% rye. So we can assume about 10% perhaps of uh, barley and probably about 75% corn in that case. Rock Hill Farms is rumored to be in the eight-year range. Some say six, some say eight. Uh, and it is bottled at 100 proof. So let's uh, get into nosing and tasting this particular pour here today. Uh, first of all, in the glass, it has a very rusty copper appearance. I know it's late. Uh, it's uh, lighting is terrible. Just trust me when I say there's a lot more red to this than most bourbons you will see. It also has very, very thick, sticky legs. And guys, that barely even moves down that glass. It just sticks there and holds. So those legs do not run very much. Uh, they just really stick to that glass. It's a very, very beautiful in the glass itself. But again, it can look great in the glass. What does it taste like? It has a very light nose. Uh, it leads with a little dark fruit, but then it opens up with a with a caramel bomb. It really does. Lots of caramel. For a hundred proofer, this is what shocks me the most about the smell of this. For a hundred proofer, there's almost no alcohol, and I mean no alcohol aroma. I mean it's just not there. Another curious thing about the nose on this is something I usually pick up with weeded bourbons, and that's more of a dry note. In this case, I'm thinking dry hay. Uh, we're talking hay that's been out in the sun. You just bailed it. It's set there. It's hot. It's dry. It's a really dry hay smell to it. But it's a very light nose. It's, it's kind of cool. But again, what does it taste like? Okay, wow. That leads with some light fruits. So it smells dark fruity. The taste is light fruit. Kind of like a pear and apple. But then the cinnamon and chocolate notes take over about mid-tongue, about mid-palate. Wow, that chocolate note is really there. It's a really creamy, dark chocolate. It's got a really soft mouthfeel. especially for a rye. And it has lots of creamy notes. I'm getting a lot of creamy oaks and a creamy, I know everybody makes fun of me, but a creamy leather here. But the creamy caramel and the creamy chocolate is really particularly awesome on this. Just really, really good. So finish got a great finish. In fact, this is where that rye has been hiding all along. There's been almost no spice on the front of the tongue, the mid tongue. That rye doesn't really pick up until the very end. And then it really opens up with a spicy rye finish that's very dry. Uh, some dry oak notes in there too. So it's really well balanced. And that taste just kind of sets there on the edge of your tongue and just lingers. So, for a 100 proofer, this is a very light and creamy bourbon. If you compare Rock Hill Farms to its brothers, Blanton's and Elmer T. Lee, uh, the proof is higher, and I would expect the flavors to be bolder. What is really particularly interesting is that the flavors are there, but they're just creamy and really delicious flavors. They're not stark in-your-face flavors. And again, I'm going to say this, but I really think this speaks to the art of making really good bourbon. Uh, the art and the craft of bourbon making. 
So I really think this is a very well-balanced bourbon, and if you can find it, it really is worth the cost. So I'm going to give this, I really want to give it a five, but I'm not. I'm going to give it 4.75 stars, two reasons. First, it's incredibly hard to find. I said earlier at the beginning, this was my unicorn bottle. I really searched for about two full years before I found my first bottle of this. And I finished it, and I looked for about six more months before I found my second bottle. Uh, so that means it's pretty hard to come by. Uh, both cost me right at the $50 mark. Uh, I think MSRP is about the same. So I didn't get you know jinked and jived on the cost. I really think that was well in line. So I really think uh, this knocks down that five-star rating, the difficulty of the find, not the price. I think it's worth 50 bucks. It's not worth 150 bucks. It's probably not worth 100 bucks. It's worth 50. But because of the difficulty of finding this bourbon, uh, I'm going to knock it down to 4.75 stars. Uh, the second reason uh, it's a 4.75 instead of a 5 uh, let me rephrase that. Another reason it's a 4.75 star bourbon, it's a darn good bourbon. If it were more common, this would easily be a five star, and I would probably make it my daily drinker. It is just really, really interesting flavors for me, and we've talked about how everyone's tastes are a little bit different. But guys, I really enjoy this pour of Rock Hill Farms. If you can find a bottle, at 50 bucks, buy it. If you don't like it, I will gladly pay you full purchase price for it. 50 bucks. It's a well worth uh, the cost. Rock Hill Farms, guys. Really enjoy this product of Buffalo Trace. So that's my take. Take it for what that's worth. And uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe. Peace. And happy pours.